And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Pedante, which is from David Serling Games. He's most well known for Yomi and Puzzle Strike. And in his games, which have a shared universe, there's one of the characters, which is a gambling panda. Well, did you know that all pandas gamble and this is the gambling game? Now, I like gambling games, not for real money, but I like them in, ooh, hoo, hoo, and these are nice, big, beautiful cars, really cool artwork. And I know that David Serlin balances his games like nobody else. I, the panda, gambling panda, is actually my favorite character in both Yomi and Puzzle Strike. So I was very excited to try this game out. Let's take a look at how it plays. All right, the first thing is you're going to need to add some coins to the game. The game does not come with coins, so we're going to use these little gold coins I have for purposes of whatever. You can even play with real money, although I highly, 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 highly recommend not. Now, this game plays a lot like poker, except we're going to use this deck of cards here. Uh, this deck of cards is made up of six suits, and each suit goes from one to ten. There's also a joker, one joker prismatic, all the colors card in the deck. Now, each round, players are going to have to ante one coin into the pot. They're going to get two cards that they keep secret from everybody else. And then three cards are going to be placed in the middle of the table. What you're trying to do in this game, in each round, is make the best hand of cards you can from these two cards in your hand, plus the cards in the middle. Right now, I have a pretty poor hand. Uh, you can see the hands on your chart here. So let's take a little closer look. The lowest hand is a pair. Um, then you got three of a kind, then a straight, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. A full house, three of one, two of another. A floosh, which is four of one color. A rainbow straight, which is five different colors and a straight. Four of a kind. A flush, five of a kind. And a straight flush, which is very difficult to do. So what each player is going to do then, uh, after everyone has looked at their things, is they can fold or you're going to put two coins on the highest poker hand that you have that you want to say you have. Now, here, I, 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 what I would do is I would tell everybody I had a floosh. Now, I don't have a floosh, and they know that it's impossible that I have a floosh at this point, but I'm hoping that more cards will come out here later. But you can lie about your hand all you want. Now, uh, you want to, uh, you don't want to lie about your hand because at the very end, people are going to be able to call you out on your hand. So everyone has a chance to do this, and players also have a chance to pay money and discard a card from their hand and draw another one. I don't want to do that. So then another card is drawn and put into the middle. Now it's quite possible that I have a foolish if I have two blue cards in my hand. And so I might stand around and say, I still have a foolish, okay? Um, although there is a five, six, and seven, I, I could get a straight. The problem is I can't ever go down. A straight is number three. And so then uh, everyone bets again, and then you put another card in the middle and I'm just going to stick with my foosh. But then each person can use one special ability. So you have to use a special ability of a card in your hand. Now my card could be draw a card, then discard a card. Reveal a card you kept. And I say I'm going to do that. But any other player, when I use that ability, can throw a challenge card out there. They think I'm lying because I could use any ability. Maybe I might want to let each other player, except me, must pay five gold to the pot or fold. Someone says, I don't think you have a red card. So they call me out. If they call me out and I am lying, then I have to pay each person who called me out five gold. And the ability doesn't go off. But if I was telling the truth, what I do is I take my card and I put the color behind it to say, yes, I can do the green ability. So they don't see my card, but I'm proving to them that I have a green card. Um, and so players can call you out on these abilities or not. And so each player has a chance to make a special ability, and each player has a chance to call them out, and so some gold might be passed around. Special abilities, look at a random card from the highest hand, whoever has the highest claimed hand. Luck, you deal a six community card, so that would be the one that actually that I would use. Hopefully no one calls me out on it. I deal it out and hope it's green. Yes, now I do have a foosh. Great. Although there's a, a pair of fives out there, so someone could have a full house maybe. 
Who knows? But anyhow, uh, players can fold at any point or you know, keep putting gold on there, and eventually at the end, everyone's going to announce what hand they have. You don't actually show the hands, you announce them. Now people can challenge you one in your hand, and if you lied about your hand, you have to pay each challenger five gold. If you were telling the truth about your hand, each player has to pay you five times the number of players. So in a four player game, they would have to pay you 20 gold. And then the round is over and you go to the next round and so on and so forth. Now there's a few other things. If you win a round and lied about your hand, you can win one of these panda lords that you'll put in front of you. Each panda lord is a special ability only you can steal. You get the dealer button while Bumble Clod watches over you. You always go last. Whenever you end a gambit without folding from the purple ability, winning or trying, return him to the glen, which is in the middle of the table. So each of these guys gives you a special ability if you win them. Also, in the game, if you ever have less than 20 gold at the beginning of a turn, you go up to 20 gold. There's a thing called snack, where if you basically lied about your hand, you discard, so the next turn you have to pay two gold to get a new hand of two cards. Other people can, if you stay in the hand or you fold, you can keep your cards and use them in the next round. So there's there's a bunch of little fiddly rules in this game about when you can keep cards and play cards. And even after playing it a few times, I still have to say, okay, how does each round go? I mean, here's the structure of play. And it's not simple like Texas Hold'em. First, there's a, a betting round, and then the snacks, which is drawing a card, discarding a card, then another betting round, then more snacks, and then a tail, which is another betting round, then the special abilities. And so you have to remember what you can do in each round. Um, and so that's how you play. You play till whatever, you know, if you're trying to run everyone else out of money or you play a certain number of rounds. Um, it's kind of like gambling. They even have rules in the rule book of how to play if you want to play with real money or not called serious face gambling conditions. If someone eliminate, you can eliminate everybody else or play for a certain number of time, whatever. Most money wins. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't. And I feel bad about that because I thought I would like it, but I'll tell you what it is. The draw of poker, the draw of Texas Hold'em, and all these different variants of poker that are out there, is that it's fairly simple. Sure, there's some little conventions that are different in different things, but essentially you're drawing and looking at your hands. Here, you're drawing, betting on a hand, lying about your hand, using a special ability, maybe lying about that special ability, having these panda lords, which have special abilities, and you know me, I love special abilities, I love all this stuff in games, but not in a quick poker game. Every round, the game kept screeching to a halt. Okay, who can do what now? Who's in? I'm looking at my cards. Okay, I can do this. Okay, which special ability am I going to lie about this turn? Should I lie? Should I not lie? I think the concept of lying about your hand is a cool one. That would have been a great addition to, this, to, this, to the poker genre. Have a poker game where you can lie about your hand, other people can call you on it. But then they added special abilities. Special abilities might be a cool thing, but adding special abilities and the lying and being able to play cards that did stuff, it just drags this game down into a really slow slog, like ah, da, 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 da. and I just never had fun about this. I mean, when you have poker and you get a bad hand, you're like, oh, okay, I fold. Or you bluff your way through it. Here you can bluff a little bit, but people can call you out on it and you're going to lose a lot of money. And uh, calling people out is, you know, uh, it's dangerous when calling their hand out. But I, I don't know what it is. Oh, you know another thing? Okay, and this I really have a problem with. This is a nice, beautiful box. In this box, you open it up, and there's a tuck box inside with the cards of the game. Fantastic. That's fine. I don't mind the tuck boxes. And on the top, you have these boards. These boards are great. See this little spot here? All this empty room could have held money tokens. Are you kidding me that you got to make me provide my own money tokens for the game? Provide a complete game in the package. Now, the card quality is good. And I, and I bet you there's going to be a lot of people who like this game. But I'm betting it's not going to do well, and I'll tell you why. Because people like me, who like special abilities and all this stuff, want a game that kind of backs it up. We don't want to play some poker variant. And if you like poker, which I like poker a little, but some people like it a lot, all this special stuff is just not going to go over that well. Maybe this game will do well, but I don't think so. The beautiful artwork and the, the I'm sure it's well balanced, and the, the different poker hands, and we had a lot of fun saying, I have a floosh. Um, that was said many times. Floosh, 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 go floosh the toilet. Um, but in the end, the game drags too long and is too thinky 
for what should be kind of a fast, fun, entertaining game. Lying to other people can be a very entertaining thing. Bluffing other people can be very entertaining. In a long, drawn-out, thinky sort of game, it doesn't work. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door!